testify to help the holy ghost is a partner you can never enjoy glory without partnering with the holy ghost john chapter 3 let's see verse 6 and 7 on the message translation john chapter 3 verse 6 and 7 message translation john chapter 3 6 and 7 message translation he said when you look at a baby it is just that a body you can look and touch but the person who takes shape within is formed by something you can't see and touch the spirit and becomes a living spirit verse 7 so don't be surprised when i tell you you have to be born from above out of this word so to speak verse 8 you will know how the wind blows this way and that you hear it's rustling it's rustling the trees but you have no idea where it come from and where is headedness that is the way everyone born from above is by the wind of god the spirit of god when you're in partnership with the holy ghost the first thing you do is that you start living like the wind when you are in, in connection with the holy ghost you know a lot of people when we talk about the holy ghost we, we, we see him as almost the least powerful some people see the holy ghost as the junior brother of god they see the holy ghost as the last born in the trinity no he's the regulator of the father and the son the holy ghost is the regulator of the father and the son god god almighty himself is the word jesus is the speaking word the holy ghost is the activating word he activates the word the holy ghost is not the last born of the trinity no is the balance of the trinity is the regulator of the trinity am i talking to somebody here the holy ghost <laughs> is the link between god and the church the holy ghost is the regulator of glory is the link between god and the church the holy ghost is the stabilizer of the godhead the holy ghost is the balance of the trinity the holy ghost is the reality of ebenezer because the bible says he's our helper we know not what to pray as we ought but the holy ghost make an intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered bring up the message translation romans chapter 8 and verse 26 raka soprata katalataka romans chapter 8 verse 26 on the message meanwhile the moment we get tired in the waiting god's spirit is right alongside helping us along if we don't know how or what to pray it doesn't matter in other words i don't need to have prayer points to speak in tongues i can just speak in tongues because something is moving me am i speaking here he said it doesn't matter he does our brain in us and for us making prayers out of wordless out of our wordless signs our aching groans the holy ghost is the energy of the godhead mm. the holy ghost is a personality treat him like a person not a human being it's a difference between a human being and a personality a human being according to what biology tells us is made up of 206 bones that thing i don't know how true it is but so they said the skeleton is made up of 206 bones yeah. so for you to be a human being you must have a, you must have a skeletal arm bone flesh so the holy ghost no it's a personality your human frailty is not your personality the attitude inside you is your personality that's why the holy ghost is a person to be a person you must have will you must have knowledge will you must have knowledge you must have emotion those three things what determines a personality the bible says in hebrews 4 verse 30 grieve not the spirit with which you are sealed Ephesians 4 verse 30 rather grieve not the spirit with which you are sealed until the day of redemption so the holy spirit can be grieved it's a person he has he has emotion first corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 the bible says, what not a man the things of a man say the spirit of man in man so not no man the things of god say the spirit of god so the spirit of god has knowledge don't forget one he has will two he has knowledge and number three first corinthians 12 verse 11 the bible says the holy ghost giveth severally to every man as he wills so he has will as emotions he has knowledge Rasandabaha. 
and he has will so the holy ghost is a personality he likes to be given attention nothing grieves the holy ghost like when he's despised that is why if you see a believer who wants to enjoy the move of the holy ghost he must always acknowledge the holy ghost anybody who wants to enjoy the holy ghost a relationship with the holy ghost must be somebody who constantly acknowledges and references the holy ghost the holy ghost hates to be ignored the holy ghost hate to be despised the holy ghost hate to be overlooked as you get to pray when you pray you must say thank you holy spirit you must acknowledge him you must speak in tongues anytime you are speaking in tongues you are communicating with the holy ghost because his language you cannot enjoy glory without the holy ghost i wish i was talking to somebody right now the holy ghost lost attention he lost attention he lost attention he is the secret to holy living you keep falling because you are not in love with him. You keep making mistakes because you are not flowing with him. If you keep flowing with him, living holy will be natural. Struggle continues when you are detached from the Holy Spirit. Struggle to please God is a continuation and prolongs when you are detached from the personality of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is so sensitive and so gentle that he announces his arrival but does not announce his departure. When he comes, you speak in tongues. When he leaves, you may still be speaking in tongue, but it's gone. That's why you must daily be conscious. Judges chapter 16, verse 20 and 21. He says, Samson said, I will arise. I will shake myself as at other times as before. And he wished not that the spirit has departed from him. Because as far as Samson was concerned, he felt the spirit was still there. He announces his arrival. When he came, the house they were in was shaking. Acts chapter 2. Rada, rada, shake it. When he started leaving, there was no shaking. Announces his arrival, but does not announce his departure. Somebody say, I need the Holy Ghost. Say, I need the Holy Ghost. 25 years, over 20 years after the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Jesus had come and gone. After the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there were some people that had no gray hair. They were old. They were still carrying on the motions of worship. And the Bible says, and Paul met them in Acts chapter 19 and verse 2 and asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we don't know whether there is any Holy Ghost. And he said, to what baptism were you baptized? They said, the baptism of John. Imagine sincere honest truthful people who were running around with just the baptism of john sincere honest but incomplete revelation sincere honest but yet empty we have a lot of people like that who are sincerely brutally honest but they are heavily empty brutally honest the holy ghost can walk into a place you know you can pray and pray and see a physical tangible sign of the holy ghost one of my daughters was telling me how a dove landed in our, in our church and the dove was walking around the church moving from place to place how many hours three hours they tried to kill the dove it wouldn't move in the heat of prayer the dove was moving from one end of the church walking taking its time walking three hours in an omega fire ministry branch in the water, in some water, and was moving from place to place. The dove was moving around. I'm sure what the dove was doing was cleaning up. A physical, tangible visitation of the Holy Ghost. A physical, tangible, for a dove to be seated physically in a premise for three hours. Scary to fly, it won't fly. Scary to die, it won't die because it was moving around god is saying now i have come what is your testimony of your encounter with the holy ghost the reason the church today has started walking in the flesh is because we have deviated from the holy ghost we have deviated from the holy ghost when the holy ghost is in full form when the holy ghost is in full form he runs the church he runs the church is the director of the service am i talking to somebody here is the director of the service the bible says that is the spirit of god life 
without the Holy Ghost is an ordinary life. Life! The challenges of your life, the pain of your life, the hardship of your life, the limitation of your life, all of these that have happened to you is so that you can get intimate with the Holy Ghost. A woman called Catherine Kuma many years ago fell in love with a man. That man was practically at everything because of the rejection she suffered as a little girl. Nobody loved her. Nobody liked her. People didn't want to associate with her. She finally met this man. She hid the man's name for life. She called him Mr. She hid his name. She fell in love with the man. That man was like her everything. She was so much intimate into the man. She was hooked up to that man until that man stabbed her in the back. She felt like dying. She carried the man on her head until the man messed her up. It took her almost eight to nine years to mourn, to cry about the heartbreak. And the Lord said to her, you give your heart to this man. If you can love me like that, the world will hear of you. The way you are emotional about this man, the way you love this man, the way you are intimate with this man, if you can love me like that, the world will hear about you. Catherine Coleman said, Holy Spirit, are you sure? He said, yes, fall in love with me. Let me be your lover. Let me be intimate with you. And she fell in love with the Holy Ghost. The Catherine Kumar fell in love with the Holy Ghost so much that in a day, she shook our world. She shook our nation. She shook our continent. Am I talking to somebody? She walks into a place with her long nails, long hair, ear bangles. You look at her and say, ah, what kind of dress is this? She's looking so kind of. When she opens her mouth and says, thank you, Holy Spirit. Wheelchairs are empty. Am I talking to somebody here? One time she was walking out of a hotel room. She was walking out of the hotel and they said to her, the lobby is crowded. We do not want people to fall down. Let's take you to the back because the lobby is crowded. It's so crowded. We know if you come out now, things will happen. The lobby is crowded. So they took her to the kitchen of the hotel. As she was passing, the cook fell. The other one fell. And they were falling into the soup pot. The people said, it's better you had passed through the lobby. Now you are destroying what you are prepared to cook. It was better you passed through the lobby. Why? It was the Holy Ghost. John G. Lake was a man that went to South Africa. And he shook South Africa because of the Holy Ghost. He was so anointed said that all the members of his church to talk to him they must stand six feet away you want to give him something you drop it and move back because if he stands from his seat you are down how did those men there was a pandemic just the way you have this corona there was a pandemic and he was preaching on the life of God. He said, once you have the life of God, no sickness, no virus, no pandemic can touch you. They look at him and they say, you are joking. He said, his blood, there's something in his blood that kills the pandemic. They took out his blood and took out the blood of somebody who had the virus and they took it to the lab and they discovered that as his, the, as his blood mixed up with the blood of the person who had the virus, the virus in the person died. How did they achieve that? The Holy Ghost. A man called Papa Adeboye fell in love with the Holy Ghost, and God told him, "Go and pray." He was driving past somewhere, and himself and the wife saw a bush path, and they prayed, and they felt the power of God in that place. They felt the power of God over there at that spot. They felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It was so strong. It was so powerful. It was so dynamic. And they went back to Lagos. They came back there to pray. They went back to Lagos. They came back there to pray. After a while, they cleared the place, asked for a few questions, but in a small portion, but a bigger portion. Today, that place is called the Redeemed Camp. It is a city on its own. I have gone there several times until today. I still miss my way. The, the, the service ground is four kilometers by four kilometers. It's called four by four. Four kilometer by four kilometer. Am I communicating? Holds a conference, a, a, a congress every year, and the least attendance is four million. Seated on the spot, a full state. What is the state? A full African country. Liberia is how many? Four million. That's a full country. A full. Gambia times two. A full, what's this? Swaziland. A full Swaziland is seated. Life! Because a man fell in love with the Holy Ghost. Your problem is that you don't know that Christianity without the Holy Ghost is churchanity. 
you are playing church without the holy ghost what gives rise to revelation what gives empowerment to your work with god is the holy ghost after now when you shall get an encounter today with the holy ghost after now you shall rise up in destiny like the rod of moses that shall swallow the rod of the egyptian you shall rise up in destiny i prophesy upon your life as you get intimate with the holy ghost i see a manifestation of power Ayakata. take care of people the holy ghost is falling on them already the elijah the spirit came on him in first kings 18. he said hey up the thing i carry nothing overtakes it it overtakes things run ahead i am busy run ahead i am busy and as soon Ahab took off elijah was here in us when the spirit carried him then when the spirit carried him the bible says he ran ahead and overtook Ahab. am i talking to somebody at the entrance of jesus you can't have the holy ghost and lack motion anywhere the holy ghost is there is movement Stagnation is an evidence of Holy Ghost bankruptcy. You see, it's the first trigger of glory. The Bible says, like the wind. Hey, when you have the Holy Ghost, two things that are symbolically used to represent the Holy Ghost, one is wind, one is fire. Anywhere you see wind, anywhere you see fire, you see the Holy Ghost. You move like the wind. I'm not saying breeze. There's a difference between breeze and wind. You blow breeze, wind blows you. Oh, I'm not. I'm not talking to someone. You blow breeze, but wind, sir. When you see wind, sir, there are winds that uproot buildings. The wine wind can uproot a tree. There are winds that is a wind that when it blows, when the wind blows, the Bible said the wind blows where it leads. You only hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it's going or coming from. So is everyone born of the spirit. Born, you hear their sound, but can't predict their destination. So once the wind is on your life, your destination is unpredictable. Nobody can predict your destiny. You are going somewhere, but they don't understand. So they keep trying to attack you. They keep trying to attack you. They don't know where you are going. They don't understand where you are going. Somebody say, I am unpredictable. They don't know where you are going. But they don't understand you are going somewhere. They look at you. If we don't stop this man, he's going to overtake us. But there's nothing you can do. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. God is on your side. Glory is on your side. Lift your one shot fire. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Take your seat. Colorable shatter is the spirit of power. Is the spirit of power. Hey, Kana Sadruba Hasha. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endured. Ah, I like what they say in Micah chapter 3, verse 8. But as for me, I'm full of power and of the spirit of the Lord to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin is the spirit of power you can't carry the Holy Ghost and be light to it and feather weight you can't carry the Holy Ghost and be powerless don't tell me that nonsense that you are powerless when you are spirit filled you cannot be power bankrupt when you are spirit buoyant am I talking to somebody here one of the major offices of the Holy Ghost is power Acts 1 verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power. To make money, you need power. What is power? Ability. Capacity. Sir, to know book, book. To know book in school, you need power. Capacity for knowledge. 
to no book <laughs> to be academically on fire I have a biological child today since she was born I have not seen a B in her result I have not seen a B 9 subject 9A 9 subject 9A 8 subject 8A 7 subject 7A I beg her to stop reading I used to beg her I beg her to calm down what is your problem she will enter my library and read my book. The book I read at my age. She reads. So I'm wondering what she will read when she is my age. I'm just there in the room and I somebody passed pew and I said, oh, after one hour, who is there? He says, It's me. What are you doing? Don't worry, don't worry. Be studying. And I walk there, I see crosses her leg. And she's reading books that I read last year, two years ago. Uh, there are some I say, leave this one. So I say to confuse you. <laughs> See, but that you are not confused now. You read it. I say, there's. <laughs> it's an empowerment. Power is capacity. Capacity. In science, it's called ability to do work. Power is capacity, sir. Please leave, leave it, leave it, leave it. If you don't have power, you don't have it. Okay, if you don't have it, you don't have it. Stop fighting people who have it. Stop fighting those who have it. Stop contending those who have it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Power. Power. Is the office. Ay, 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 ay. Everywhere, any world you want to conquer, you need power in such dimensions. To conquer the world of business, you need power. Emirates have conquered the world of aviation. They've got the power, the capacity to stay on the air like a bed. They have conquered the power of aviation. No, don't bother. Even if you are American Airlines, don't bother. Emirates has conquered it. Am I talking to somebody here? Many years ago, Dubai was a, a bush part. A bush part. Am I talking to somebody here? But the king of Dubai, Sheikh Mukhtar, came out with a dream as a young boy that if we do not do something about this, this place will end up, end up in mockery. And he came out of reading his book, The Making of Dubai. I said, was something he said? He said, every day, the Gazette goes out, knowing that it, out to, it has to outrun the smartest lion or perish. And the lion goes out, knowing it has to outrun the fasted Gazette or staff. The lion goes out. With a mentality, I have to outrun the smartest gazette or staff. And the fastest gazette, no, I have to outrun the smartest lion or die. Life is make it or die. Until you put your life on that line. That if I don't make it, I go. Am I talking to somebody? It takes a lion heart to get a lion share. Don't let anybody tell you they're not the first step. They're the first step. Don't let nobody tell you, don't kill yourself. Kill yourself. Make impact or die. I like what Praying Hyde said. Give me Scotland or die. I was watching the boy talking in his interview. And they were asking him about how he got certain songs. And there was a particular song. He said it took him three years. What? He said three years to cook it, to change it, to modify it, to pray. When he brought it out. Great things take time. Sir, in do me is five minutes. He not the belly fool. Am I talking to somebody? But to do pounded yam, to do shako yokoto, to do all the orishi, all the shaki, you have to spend time in the kitchen. Am I talking to somebody here? 
Power to occupy. Sir, so there's no explanation. Read all the books you want. Jesus was the best teacher. He said, I have taught you, but tarry in Jerusalem. Until power comes, you are nothing but a brutal, incoherent noisemaker. Until power comes, a pastor without power is a lecturer without knowing. Until power comes, it takes power. A businessman without power is only shedding goods that others will buy somewhere else. Am I talking to somebody right now? Power! When God, I was born into a wealthy family. I was born to a wealthy family to the glory of God. Very wealthy family. Cars take us to school. We select the cars that take us to school. In the era when money was money, Mercedes was in our house. In the era when money was money. Cars without roof, you know those open roof cars, was in our house. Era when money was money. They would bring money in bags. We would come. My father would just say, count it. Who can't, who steal, who can't, who steal, who can't, who steal. He's not aware. Until one time I was preaching, I was talking about stealing. My father looked at me one kind. So you people used to steal money that time. As I was preaching, no. God knows, God knows I've confessed. <laughs> so I was born into wealth. So when God called me to preach, one of the biggest problems I had was food. Because then my mother would put food 1 a.m. wake up to eat, not eating the dream, eating real life. 1 a.m. wake up, sausage, all of those things will be there. We eat, eat, eat. So when God called me to preach, I saw the Archbishop in the house. I saw manifestation, and I knew God had called me into the power ministry. And the Archbishop was always talking of fasting, fasting, fasting. And I didn't like that part. Growing up, Reverend Kings like who can testify, I used to be chubby. Growing up, when I come to Reverend John's house, then to see the mother, we say that your fat friend. I'm not joking. Is that what your mom says? Say that your fat friend. I used to be chubby. If you see my dad, you know what I'm talking about. My dad looked like where two or three are gathered. And but fasting was a problem. And I knew that one of the easiest ways to trigger power was fasting. Remember the first time I fasted? The Archbishop said we should fast it too. No, the 12, Bishop Oyeriko now came and said, we should take it to two. By 10, I died. <laughs> 10 a.m. You, you know, some of you don't like truth, but me, I'll say the way it is. By 10 a.m., I died. I was looking at the food, I sat on the dining. I put my head like that, my, mom was telling, my mother was telling me, sorry, sorry. 10 a.m., Around 11, 12, my body was hot. <laughs> my body was hot. I was sick. I was sick. It was getting to... Now, when it got to 12, I said, time is close. I now slept on dining. When I opened my eyes, I rushed to grab the food. I thought it was already 4. I looked at the time. It was quarter past 12. So I, <laughs> I slept for 15 minutes. I said, God. I remember, if you laugh at me on this... God will, God will not forgive you. Don't laugh at me. I followed some brethren to the mountain. We saw a crusade. The Archbishop minister, miracles. We are angry. We are going to see the face of God. We went to a mountain in Oshun. As I got to the mountain, we didn't eat from Benin. I said, can't we eat when we get to the mountain? We'll start the fast. They said, we have started already now. I said, ah, this journey, we are supposed to eat something now. When we got to the mountain, <laughs> I stayed. We landed there some minutes to two in the afternoon. Three, no food. Four, no food. Five, no food. Six, no food. I went to a corner. I prayed for 10 minutes and I'll call them. And God said, has answered all our prayer. <laughs> that we should go home. <laughs> we should eat and go home. <laughs> they said, you go. Sir, I left. <laughs> oh, I should tell you the truth now. I just collected money I left I said, you are going back to Bini I said God say he has answered our prayer there was a restaurant at the foot of the mountain to climb down from that mountain I almost died when I got to the restaurant I said mother give me rice 
this yam. I say, eh, 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 eh. I ate. I bought the ninth car. I went back. On the seventh day, they were telling us, come and see. Revelations God showed us. God was telling us this will happen. In my mind, I said, in my house, as I was eating, I was hearing God. I was sucking the biscuit bone. God was talking. It was a problem. But some of those people are ministers now. Some years ago, when we were fasting, they were begging me to round up. They were begging me. There's the problem with you is that when you start leading prayer, we know when you start, but we don't know when you finish. Can you pray? Let us go. Let us rest. But did they pain us? And they said, This is not the you of years ago. What happened? It got to a point. There was a major attack I said to the Holy Ghost. I said, this is the barrier between you and I. I will give it up. And the problem is that those people that have weaknesses, when they surrender to the Holy Ghost, the very thing that was your weakness becomes your strength. Today, all my pastors complain, Papa doesn't eat. Papa doesn't eat. Everywhere I go to minister, the problem I have with them is food. Papa wasted our food. Papa wouldn't eat. We brought it like that, we carried it. We brought it like that, we carried it. At home, I would tell them, reduce what you are making for me. They will reduce it. I say, it's too much. They will reduce it. I say, it's too much. They say, is it, is it Ebenezer that is eating your papa? What is the problem? What was your weakness becomes your strength. When you tell the Holy Ghost that you cannot help yourself, it should help you. Stop trying to be a superman. Stop trying to pretend. Tell him you are weak. The best way to enjoy the Holy Ghost is to surrender. Tell him you are weak. Tell him you are nothing without him. Tell him you can't help yourself. You are still sitting. I say, stand up and begin to tell him right now. Begin to say, Holy Ghost, without you, I can do nothing. You are my, you are, you are my force. You are my encouragement. You are the active force of God. Thank you for watching Udeme Fruitful Channel.